one of two things. If you had a child, would you want them to date somebody like you? If you had a child, would you want them to date somebody like you're dating? That is a very good frame for you to figure out whether or not you're actually being treated with respect. So ask yourself those. The podcast, NLU and then Conscious Couples Podcast, these podcasts are a journey of personal development in these things. And so in many ways, Kevin and I are learning just as much as all the listeners on that journey. What are some easy ways to tell if your partner respects you versus just feeling entitled to you? Well, that's a great question. Uh, oh, man. Go ahead, go ahead, Alan. You're the you do more relationship. Uh, you do relationship coaching, not more than I, because I don't do any. But go on. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> so therefore, you well, do technically do more. it is more than you. Yeah. Right. Um, it it comes down to the way they treat you, and it really is. You can tell how someone whether or not someone has self respect by the way they treat themselves, talk to themselves. Uh, so the way that they talk to their partner, the way they talk to you, uh, the way they act around you, the way they treat you in public versus the way you, they treat you in private, that's actually the main one. The, the distance between the way someone treats you in private and the way they treat you in public is the distance of the disrespect. It's just hiding. Remember this. This will be quick, Kevin. Uh, I doubt it. For all of our listeners, <laughs> I doubt it. For all of our, I haven't, I haven't earned his trust <laughs> in that. Understandable. Understandable. There's only so many promises you can break about. This will be quick. Right. Uh, so the three layers of the ego, number one is who you really are. Number two is who you want to believe you are. Number three is who you want others to believe you are. When you have a partner who treats you better in public than in private, you know that you're probably... Um, there's a dissonance in, of disrespect. That, that's what I would say. Yeah, I would, I would, just to Alan's point, I think actions speak louder than words. It's very easy for somebody to say they respect you, but if you, this is, the, this is really what it is. How often do you feel respected versus how often do you feel disrespected? And this is, a, I, this is one of my favorite things in the world because I think it helps you take yourself out of the relationship. One of two things. If you had a child, would you want them to date somebody like you? Mm -hmm. If you had a child, would you want them to date somebody like you're dating? That is a very good frame for you to figure out whether or not you're actually being treated with respect. So ask yourself those two questions is what I would say. Strong work. Hey, man. Uh, w one last thing before the next question. No, no, no. I get the last one. Remember, if you're, <laughs> if you're used to being disrespected, your scale is off. Yeah. Um, like if you had a really tough childhood and, and were around a lot of disrespect, drugs, alcohol, you name it then your your Richter scale is off. And we've done a whole episode on that. So you might feel like you're being respected more than you ever have been. It doesn't mean you're being respected that much. Great point. I know some people, one of my clients in particular, was being very disrespected but knew nothing different. And so that's why a coach is so valuable because they can come in with an objective perspective and say, listen, this is not normal. This is not okay, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And then they can do with that what they will. But that's what a coach does. They wake you up to things you... They take you out of your own experience with an object objective lens, or at least that's what I think they're supposed to do. Good point. Thanks, brother. How do you merge an intimate relationship if one person is mission-focused and the other is more pleasure-focused? Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I've been there, and it's very, very difficult. So what that question is referring to is to paradigms. Paradigms are a deep belief about what life is about so if you've ever seen the sitcom friends it's one of my favorite sitcoms that is a friend-centered paradigm notice how their intimate partners are always secondary to their group of friends um a pleasure-centered paradigm is a deep belief that life is about pleasure and enjoyment and having fun um and i had a pleasure-centered paradigm growing up so my my paradigm growing up was achievement number one friends number two uh, not just the show but in general friends and then third is pleasure and naturally all my friends and all my associations were about achievement friendship and uh pleasure which was partying and that kind of stuff if someone has a pleasure-centered paradigm and you have a growth-oriented paradigm mission-oriented paradigm service-oriented paradigm it's going to be very difficult to integrate and align those are usually in conflict because most of the things that are pleasure-centered are immediate gratification and most of what it takes to achieve goals and dreams and mission uh is delaying gratification so 
I've been in a relationship where it was constantly in conflict because of those two paradigms. And um, I think that there's probably a way you can make it work. I don't think you should. Mm. I think you gotta, you have to be very, very honest. I think that's probably the, the best place to start is, I don't know, I think a lot of people hide behind not telling the truth. I know this was something for you at one point, Alan. You, you were going through... Remember you were going through the human needs and we were talking, we, you and I were talking about adventure and fun, unique experiences. Oh, yeah, man. Yep. And you're like, yeah, that's pretty important to me. And I was like, Alan, come on. That's not important to you at all. <laughs> because I knew that, I think in your yeah. mind, you wanted to believe it was more than it actually was because that's, I mean, obviously, why not, right? But I, I think, think I just, was afraid that if I right. didn't love adventure, then yeah. that would make Emilia and I less compatible. Yeah. And I was scared of that. Rather than owning the truth, and then doing adventures that are aligned and goal yeah. oriented. So I, think I appreciate starts, that, man. You calling me on that was important. Oh, of course. I think it starts. It was one of I our ten it, commandments. Go ahead. <laughs> I think it starts an honest dialogue of even when we went away, I worked every day. I mean, I worked the the day Tara and I got married, I worked in the morning. She was still sleeping. Or no, I think she was getting her hair done. She actually got up earlier than I did that day. But that I told her before we left, like that's important to me that it's important to me that I have the opportunity to work. And I said, I am, I will travel with you everywhere in the world. I'm more than happy. I mean, obviously I don't enjoy planes, so if we could take trains, that would be better. But as long as there is Wi-Fi and I can work, that's, that's the main thing. So her and I have just had a very open dialogue. And I said this from the beginning. It, she said, if you ever... My one deal breaker is if you ever f tried to force me to be an entrepreneur. And I said, that'll never happen. I don't think you should be because being an entrepreneur is very difficult. I said, the one thing you have to promise me is you'll never try to stop me from being one. And you'll never try to stop me from being a podcaster. And that is one of the pillars that we have built this foundation of our relationship on. But it's built on the truth. So I think you have to have the, the courage to tell the truth. Just say, ah, you know, that's not for me. That's not one of my most important things. I will do it if it's aligned for you, but maybe that's not how I'm wired. Super quick story. Oh my God, here we go again. Kev, you remember Friendsgiving when Emilia and I were super late? Sorry yeah, of about course. that. There was a calendar issue there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so Emilia and I are grocery shopping. We're making mini pies for Friendsgiving. And we're very early in our relationship. I think this is like a month in, not even. And she, we're, I'm always playful when I'm out and about, and I don't know if this is a protector or what, but for some reason, we were at Ikea this weekend, and I was just super playful riding those cards around. I saw around, it come through in it. a credit card statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <man. laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the food was good, man. So, uh, I'm very playful in grocery stores and all that kind of stuff. I'm, it's awesome. And she turns to me, and she's like, oh, wow, like, do you love grocery shopping? Like, And I was like, uh, and I had that moment with myself. I had that moment with myself. I'm like, no, no, I can't, I have to tell her. No, no, I hate it. It's the worst. I hate grocery shopping. But, but if you love grocery shopping, I can grocery shop with you and try to learn to love it because I love you. Mm -hmm. And I went through this whole math equation of like Euclid's axioms and common notions. I'm not going to get into it. But that which is equal to the same thing is actually actually equal to each other. It's a math equation. And so what I did was I explained it that way, which probably didn't land. But essentially, <laughs> it was like, if you love grocery shopping, I will come grocery shopping with you. But no, I do not like it. And I probably never will. Mm -hmm. So being honest with yourself and being honest with your partner about what you truly value is, is really, really important. And I hope that is relevant to the original question. <laughs> What is something you wish you knew about relationships that would have helped the previous relationships, whether with a partner, coworker, or friend? Oh, man. Mm. Vulnerability. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Let me, let me get in here, will you? Let me yeah. get a word in. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I think it's this. I really do believe the level of your personal development equates to the level of your capability in any relationship. What you, and I don't mean intrinsically, again, intrinsically, I believe you're a valuable human being, but the value you can bring to a relationship from the standpoint of communication, patience, intelligence, uh, experience, all of that is based on what you're learning on your own. This is what I would say. I actually saw this on a TV show today. We're watching a TV show called Alone, where people go out in the wilderness and survive by themselves. And it, 
the there was a lady there who went out there for life experience. She said, yeah, I want to win the money, but I want to prove to myself something here. And she said at the end of the episode, she said, I thought that in a partnership, oftentimes it's hard to remember that you're two parts of this partnership. And being out here has taught me that the better I am on my own, the better I am in a relationship. So that's what I wish I knew early on in any relationship. The better you are on your own, the better you are in a relationship. That's why being single after a hard relationship is so important because you're learning to be yourself again and you're becoming a more capable version of yourself. Hi there. This is Dr. Taryn McCarthy and I am the host of the Business of Happiness podcast, which would not be in existence were it not for the one and only incredible Kevin Palmieri. Seriously, I am so indebted to Kevin for the service that he provides. Every week he meets with me. He has been coaching me on how to initiate and launch this podcast. He helped me put it together with his great expertise. And every week his whole team works tirelessly to get these podcasts uploaded to Buzzsprout and to deliver my content to my audience. I am so grateful. I couldn't say enough about him. In fact, we've been working together so well. I've seen so much wonderful um, input from my listeners and asking me for more that in just a few weeks, we're going to be doubling the number of podcasts we produce per week. So this trajectory is just flying and I'm really enjoying the whole process. So I couldn't say enough about him. Please, if this is something you're considering, I highly recommend him. And reach out to me anytime if you have any questions about our experience. Good luck. Bye-bye. Fire. Thanks, Fire. Man. Yeah, um, I would second everything Kev said. If your personal development set point, if you're only well-developed at a, at a four, everyone think about themselves at 15. Were you capable of a magnificent marriage with kids? And No. No. Right, because you're young. All of us are young at 15. We don't know what we're doing, and if you do, you you certainly were better than me because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So, so yeah, the personal development of the individuals within the relationship is dictating the quality of that relationship. And so, if you're both two growing, rich, dynamic people who not rich financially, but like rich in terms of love and abundance and mindset and growth and b learning and books and that relationship is going to be magnificent. Two people that are struggle bus, not learning much, not growing at all. We know what the the outcome is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, my, mine would be vulnerability. What do I wish I knew? I wish I understood what vulnerability was, why it was so important, how to actually do it, um, why it was so important in an intimate relationship. And I also wish I understood trauma. And I wish I understood how much we hang on to trauma in our minds, our bodies, and our hearts that happened years and years and years and years ago. And I, I wish I knew how much that affected us. You know, and I wish I knew the trigger responses, fight, flight, f f um, freeze, and fawn. Fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. I didn't know what fawn was. So there's that quote you've been saying lately, Kev, parent pleasers end up people pleasers. I, that's not Very. mine, so I can't, take, I can't take credit for that. I saw that somewhere online. Super powerful. Super powerful. But yeah, that's what I wish I knew earlier. I wish I understood attachment styles and vulnerability. And I wish I understood trauma and trauma responses at a deeper level. And the podcast, NLU and then Conscious Couples Podcast, these podcasts are a journey of personal development in these things. And so in many ways, Kevin and I are learning just as much as all the listeners on that journey and same with conscious couples so i i didn't know any of this stuff in my early 20s same yeah same i tend to take all the blame and accountability when relationships fail what advice could you give me to change this way of thinking hmm. that's a great question this, this is what i would say simple Stay single long enough until you realize your actual level of self-worth. Alan, have you ever been in a relationship and you said to yourself, I don't deserve this? Have you ever been there? I, oh, I yeah, know man. I said that a lot when I was younger. The truth is, I deserved it. I just didn't think I did because my level of self-worth was so low. 
I would also take blame for everything that went wrong because I assumed I wasn't good enough to be in the relationship. I think it's a self-worth issue more than anything. I'm telling you, I, so many people tell, like they say, after you have a, a tough breakup, go be single for a while, but they don't tell you why. This is why. Because when you're with somebody else, everything gets magnified or it gets shrunk. But when you're on your own, you can actually figure out, okay, where is my level of self-worth? Where is my level of self-confidence? Where is my level of self-love? Regardless of somebody else. Then when you bring that into a relationship, you understand yourself at a deep enough level to understand how somebody else affects you. So that's what I would say. You have to do deep introspective work, probably with a coach who will ask you the right questions, but it's probably a self-worth issue. If you assume everything is your fault, it's because you do not value yourself or you don't have the accurate level of self-worth. That's what I would say. Uh, the, the answer that I had for this one, in one of my relationships, you know, and I want everyone to understand this, it took me 30 years to figure out how to have a magnificent relationship. And I'm now super grateful I have the most magnificent relationship that not only I've ever experienced, but I think in some ways than I've ever seen. But it's more a testament to who Emilia is than anything. And she's the one who studies all this stuff, you know, and we have a business built on that. And she's taught me most of this stuff and Kevin's taught me a lot as well. And then Brene Brown as well, for sure. But what I want to say here is it took me so long to figure this thing out. I, I was always good at success. Whenever it came to achieving a goal, I was always good at that, no matter what the goal was. I wasn't very good at relationships. Um, and usually you're good at success or relationships. It's very hard to be good at both. Some are, some are, but I think it's challenging. And the reason I'm sharing this is that if you're out there and you're taking blame for everything, I'm going to give an interesting twist on this. In some of my past relationships, I did the same thing. I was literally taking relationship seminars regularly, trying to figure out, like, is there something wrong with me? Like, what am I doing here? What is the deal? Like, and what I want to say is this. When I eventually figured it out, and that's an infinite game, so I haven't figured it out, but my relationships always got better and better and better and better and better. Because I was getting better and better and better and better and better. Because I thought I was the problem. And by the way, in hindsight, I was not all of the problem. And I, I used to think I was a lot of the problem. And then I had some partners that would agree that I was the problem. When in reality, I very clearly was not all of the problem anyways. I was part of the problem. And I use problem loosely here. But my point is this. If you're taking all the responsibility, you're also going to get all the growth. Just make sure you're not doing it at the detriment of your self-esteem and self-worth. If you have an insanely good growth mindset, because it has served me, I spent 30 years trying to, not 30 years, because my first relationship was when I was 17 or 16, my first serious one. So 16 to 30, so you're looking at 14 years. I spent 14 years trying to figure out how to succeed and have a magnificent relationship. In those 14 years, I really did think everything was my fault, and I took responsibility for a lot. Um, but at the end of the day, I learned so much because of that, and now I invested all of that learning and all of that growth and all of that ownership into my relationship with Emilia. And I, honestly, she did the same damn thing, thank goodness. Even with partners who were constantly pointing at her, she was pointing back at herself, so she got all the growth. But be very careful. If you do not have high self-belief, that is a very dangerous game. Um, and I'll say that with a disclaimer. That's what I was going to say. Just understand that uh, Alan and Emilia are maybe two two of the people with the most high level of self-belief on the planet. So that, that might not necessarily work for everybody, but I do think that's an important frame and an important direction to take. Next, Level Nation, that is the last question we'll be taking today. I'm going to do a little bit of a change up, Alan. We talked a mm -hmm. lot about relationships today, intimate relationships mostly. Number one, go listen to the Conscious Couples podcast. Alan and Emilia have a wonderful podcast all about this. And number two, they also do relationship talks coaching where they help couples have certain breakthroughs or they, ha they help couples ask themselves the difficult questions and answer the difficult questions while being in a safe place to do it. So if you are in a relationship and you want it to get better, reach out to Alan and or Emilia and I'm sure they can help you. Thank you, brother. Thank Very you. Welcome. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate of course, it. Of course. Uh so at the Talk conscious about couples. Me. Talk yeah, about yeah, me. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> no, I'm um no, I know. But I actually was gonna. So Damn. uh the Conscious Couples podcast is actually produced 
but it's interesting. I, I get to be a client at my own company. Very, very cool experience. And when we first started the Conscious Couples podcast, I think we're 27 episodes in, I was telling Kev, I'm like, it is unbelievable. I mean, you upload the audio, you upload the video, and it's all done. It's all done for you. YouTube, show notes, audio, Buzzsprout, you name it. It's all done for you. I'm a client at my own company for a reason, right? It's that good. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, talk to Kev. Kev and the team at Next Level Podcast Solutions are nothing short of magnificent. And we have 18 recurring clients, and that's why. Because it's just so good. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate that very much. Next Level Nation, we appreciate you all for joining us, whether you are live or listening to the replay. As always, at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. B, thank you so very much for filling in and crushing it as always. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate you. Please reach out. Of course.